From small beginnings on a paddock in farmland north of Topol, Miraka has developed a new milk drying and UHT facility that's now in its fourth season of production. It cost $90 million to build the factory, which has been profitable from the beginning. Miraka won the Māori Excellence in Export Award at the 2015 New Zealand International Business Awards in March. The Miraka story started initially with Wadarapa Moana Incorporation, which I'm chairman of, and we have for a long time, for our shareholders, wanted to look at investing directly into the food business. We've owned land and farms and dairy farms for a long time, and we wanted to have an integrated value chain business and take our products directly to the overseas markets. Initially we started off by talking to to Arapaki Trust, uh, which is one of our uh, trusts in our region. We shared the same vision and values as Farno, and so we put together a small team to work with both our shareholders and then to put the rest of the business together. Initially it was always going to be milk processing. We understood that we needed to start off with doing commodity milk, so in this case whole milk powder. Uh, what it up in Moana had already been doing for four or five years, work with ag research on extracting milk proteins, but to get a processing base we needed to actually start a business and a business model that could start to uh, create the business initially before we could get into adding more value to the milk. We incorporated other whānau shareholders within the region around Tuarupaki, so that was Waipapa Nine Trust, Hohanga Roa, Huiero Farms, uh, and so together with that team gave us a reasonable amount of uh, capital to start with and then we searched further uh, for that capital, the Māori trustee came on board and then as part of that strategy we always wanted a cornerstone type customer uh, profile, particularly into the Asian market and uh, so we uh, were able to attract Vinamilk to, uh, to invest with us to, as part of that program. We share a very common vision and values as they do and they saw that as a good fit for them. Interesting enough, this was their first foreign investment for Vinamilk outside their own country. They're the largest dairy company in Vietnam and are doing extremely well. Shanghai Punjing aren't an investor in Miraka, so what we do have is a uh, relationship where we're contracting and selling milk to them as Shanghai Punjing into the Chinese market but they're not a direct investor in Miraka. We understand that for any business, the customer relationships and those partners are a key to building sustainable businesses. And so when we've searched around, we try and find those that have common vision and values that we believe that we can work with. So far, that has been successful in a very short period of time, and so we're pleased about that. It will continue to require a lot of work, of course but certainly the initial engagement and communication has been very good and we've quickly been able to you know, build that relationship. In 10 years time, you know, we would expect to, uh, from a revenue point of view, be three or four times the size that we are now in terms of value. Uh, and hopefully uh, with the use of less milk, therefore that means there's less uh, intensity on the land. We started production first of August 2011. We've got 100 suppliers. We process 270 million litres of milk into 37,000 tonnes of whole milk powder. We've commissioned our UHT plant last year and we have the capacity to manufacture 60 million litres of UHT milk into 250 mil packs of UHT, so 240 million packs of UHT. So we've got a GEA dryer, so it's an eight metric tonne dryer that uh, produces 150 tonne a day at peak and 37,000 tonne a year. And the UHT plant's a Tetra Pak UHT plant with SPX processing front end. The innovative thing about Medarca, what's unique about our processing plant is that we use geothermal steam. So to my knowledge, there's no other um, plants in the world that use geothermal to run their dairy operations. So instead of using coal or natural gas, we use geothermal steam. And we also, in terms of innovation, our wastewater system is, is quite unique in the fact that we have a worm farm to get rid of our byproducts and we send our treated wastewater, we irrigate that to land. Our location is actually very good, it's based in the central plateau. Mōkai as a valley is obviously reasonably central to what has become quite a large dairy sector. So traditionally the location hasn't had a lot of dairy cows but uh, over the last 20 years that's changed. Our powder plant is running 24-7 at the moment and we have our UHT plant on part-time. 
Geothermal steam we use for our power and it comes from one of the local providers that is part of Meetup here as well. It basically makes us unique. We other plants are using gas for the reboiler. Uh, when the gas plant went down uh, a couple of years ago, I think Meetup were the only plant that was running. We have a different culture here. Everyone works as a whānau compared to other plants that I've worked at and we all get in and help out as one. We have two functions really. We have our UHT production and our powder production. Our powder is trucked up to Mount Monganui on curtain cider trucks and it's loaded into the export containers there and exported to various markets around the world. The UHT is produced here and loaded into containers here to reduce handling really and truck directly to Port of Tauranga. The challenges for us really is that we're 140 k's away from the Port of Tauranga. Uh, we don't have a rail siding so everything has to get trucked up so obviously that's a challenge um, with road permits and back roads. Uh, we work with a fantastic transport partner who, who works with NZTA on bigger permits for the trucks. We can truck 35 tonne of whole milk powder in a, in a curtain cider truck up to Tauranga. Uh, UHT is a challenge, we can only put one full container onto, onto a container truck up to the port of Tauranga, so at full capacity for UHT that means 3,000 truck movements. We're working with our transport partners to try and reduce that, get bigger permits and put two full containers onto a truck. We've got 100 suppliers at Medaka, 40% of those are from Māori Incorporation or Trust. The balance are non Māori. Now, over the years we started off with 48 suppliers in our first year, we're now sitting at 100 that deliver 250 million litres of milk. And they're part of the community. One of the great things about Medaka is that we've welcomed them into the Medaka Fano and they feel like they're part of the company. From our perspective, our farmers weren't taking a risk in joining Medaka in the first year because we had confidence in what we were doing. But for them, I mean, it was a leap of faith to a degree because we didn't have a factory at that point, it was, it was a beer paddock, so they were reliant on us to deliver the factory on time and then be profitable. So we've been able to achieve both those things in, in terms of getting the factory up and running 1st of August 2011 and being profitable from day one. In terms of capital structure for our development, that comes from our shareholder base and our shareholders are certainly keen to grow the business. As we grow, we'll, we go to our shareholders and they will have to front up with the capital for that growth and certainly with the UHT, all of our shareholders uh, were quite happy to fund that growth. The Medaka strategy from day one has been to get into the dairy game through the commodity side of the business, so that's, that's whole milk powder, but it's always been to go up the value chain and get more into consumer products. We've delivered that with the UHT plant. We're sitting at the 60 million UHT plant, we want to quadruple that up to you know, significant volume. It'll get us in total to around 500 million litres of milk per annum. The great thing about the Medaka story is that we have, we have great shareholders, we have very good proposition in terms of uh, what we're doing with the environment, our kaitiaki tanga. And for me, if we can take Medaka brands globally, partnering through strategic alliances, leveraging the Medaka story, that to me in 10 years' time will be a real success. <coughs>